Hello and welcome to Brawl Jewel. Today we're back with a brand new themed magic mod. From the creator of the Ordinator, Growl, Wildcat and many others, we now have Triumvirate. If you're familiar with the author's other mods, you'll be well aware of how they create new ways of building a character. Triumvirate is no different. With 75 entirely new spells, the mod offers a more focused, archetype-based magic mod. The five magical archetypes include the Druid, the Shadow Mage, the Warlock, the Cleric, and finally the Shaman. Each one comes with 15 new balanced spells, spread across three schools of magic each. They also come with new fitting effects and visuals to complement their theme. You can find them at appropriate vendors all around Skyrim, and they're balanced to be used throughout an entire playthrough. To give you an idea of what you can expect, we'll break down each new archetype. First we have the Druid. By manipulating plants, animals and even spirits, the Druid can become an almost unstoppable force of nature. By calling upon his beastly allies, he can take a more indirect approach to combat, relying on the prowess and special abilities of his summons. Unlike regular summons, the Druids require a constant stream of magicka. If you lose concentration, they'll disappear. This also lets you quickly switch between them mid-combat, instead of relying on a single ally. Call upon your Raven to blind your enemies, or summon your Rattlesnakes to deal poison damage over time. Combo them by calling your Hound of Hercene to drastically lower your enemy's armour before finishing them off with the devastating bleed damage of your Grey Wolf. In the end game, a Druid will easily be able to dual cast his summons. Throw in the Twin Souls perk and a Druid alongside his Legion of Creatures can completely overwhelm his enemies. But that's only one side of the Druid. You can also manipulate nature for a variety of effects. Reclaim a corpse for the earth, growing a random harvestable plant in its place. Or instead raise a wall of trees in front of you, blocking a passage for a short time. Grow parasitic plants that deal damage to anyone that walks through it, sprouting good berries on their corpse if they die in its entanglement. Good berries can then be eaten for a powerful healing effect. Take on the shape of nature itself with Wild Shape, letting you assume the form of a deer when sprinting out of combat, giving you a quick and fun way to cross Skyrim's landscape. Or for a more direct role in combat, take on the shape of the Horned Lord. This powerful transformation lets you use new melee attacks with your right arm, while still having the ability to cast spells with your left. And finally, to assist yourself and your allies in combat, you can call upon the spirits. These can provide a constant stream of healing or damage over time, depending on the spirit you call. Altogether, the Druid offers a unique way to play as a mage, and with its wide range of spells, it's probably one of the most versatile new archetypes. Next up is the Shadow Mage. This powerful, rare form of magic lets you traverse the shadows and manipulate darkness itself to boost your magical powers. The Shadow Mage is by far the most mobile of the new archetypes, with several abilities focusing on speed and teleportation. Their ability to step and pull through the shadows allows them to instantly engage targets from far away, by either dashing or pulling their enemies towards them, while also lowering their armour. Shadow Mages will also move faster while in combat, and have the ability to perform a Shadow Dance, a 20 foot dash in the direction they're facing just by jumping. At the core of a Shadow Mage's power is the spell Gather Shadows. This buff makes you 50% stronger while in both natural and supernatural darkness. If it isn't night time, you can simply create a source of your own darkness. Early on this can be done by throwing darkness towards an area, but a Master Shadow Mage can create a pool that follows them around, making them incredibly powerful at any time of day. Your goal as a Shadow Mage is to take your enemies by surprise, by striking first, striking hard, and then disappearing into the mist. Your abilities Azra's Wrath and Nightblade let you convert 50% of your current magicka into huge amounts of burst damage. This makes you incredibly deadly against a single target, but not the best during prolonged fights. A Shadow Mage without a constant pool of magicka is a sitting duck, so to keep it filled, you'll want to take advantage of your new absorption spells. This lets you steal your enemy's health and magicka while in combat, either through a draining touch or a draining mist that covers the entire battlefield. Altogether, the Shadow Mage is easy to learn, but difficult to master. When played right, a Shadow Mage's enemies won't even know what hit them. Next up is the Warlock. This Daedra Summoner relies on his vile curses and damage spells to not only destroy his foes, but to consume their spirit. A new set of destruction spells lets you send off various blasts and bolts that deal a good amount of raw damage. A Master Warlock can even hurl his enemies into oblivion, dealing huge damage and making them disappear until you cast it again. If the target dies to any of these spells, you consume their spirit for a short time. You can then bind that spirit to one of your five new summons. These minions are powerful Daedra on their own, with various physical and magical attacks at their disposal. But if they're bound with a spirit you consumed earlier, they gain new abilities. Your Gremlin will gain a 40% chance to disarm its target, while your Leviathan's attacks can immobilise and cause targets to bleed. Your Ravagor will gain a Vampiric Cloak, while your Temple Grim will feed on your enemy's spellcasting. As your minions wreak havoc on the battlefield, you can continue to damage your enemies or massively debuff them with your Vile Curses. Your destruction spells Balefire and Cloud Kill can leave your enemies corrupted and poisoned, making them take even more damage from your minions' attacks. Your new set of Curses can also provide further debuffs, curse them with Weaken to lower their attack damage, 
or curse them with Life Trap to make you and your minions absorb health when you attack them. Altogether, the Warlock relies on a fair amount of synergy, but once mastered, your powerful minions will stomp all over your cursed enemies. For a more support-oriented archetype, there's the Cleric. Despite being more of a support, the Cleric can also fight alone. Spells like Solar Ray and the more powerful Storm of Vengeance give you a solid amount of Holy Fire damage to take down your opponents. Throw in your ability to enchant your power attacks with Holy Fire, and you have a good mix of melee and ranged damage. But a Cleric's true strength lies in his companions. A new set of auras and buffs can turn your allies into almost unstoppable forces. Provide aid to your allies, buffing their skills as long as you keep it concentrated on them in battle. Or instead lay down one of three auras, buffing your damage, giving off a heal, or letting your allies reflect attacks. A Master Cleric can even grant immortality, giving all allies unlimited health regeneration for 30 seconds. And if that's somehow not enough to live, a Cleric can cause an exodus, forcing all nearby hostile forces to disappear from the world for a short time. Your partner in crime can be any normal follower, but if you'd prefer, the Cleric also has the power of conversion. Even your most hateful enemies can be converted into allies, making them not only fight alongside you, but also do things like trade. For a more permanent option, there's the Spirit Guardian. This manifestation of your racist spirit acts as a fully-fledged follower that can carry equipment, obey orders, and do anything a normal follower can. As long as your team has a cleric, your allies will never fall. And finally, there's the Shaman. As a follower of the old ways, a Shaman's spells revolve around totems, visions, and being one with the land. Using their vast knowledge, a Shaman should aim to avoid any unknown enemies. By using abilities like Eye of the Allmaker, he can survey the area from a distance, picking up any intel on nearby threats. His two vision spells can then pinpoint the weakness to his enemies, applying automatic debuffs if they get too close. In battle, a Shaman can rely on his wind, water and earth totems to deal various forms of healing or damage, depending on the situation. Or perhaps he avoids direct combat altogether by binding his spirit to his wind or sun filgus. These controllable summons leave your body behind and cast two spells each, but they require a constant stream of magicka and can't stray too far from its source. If things do get up close and personal, a Shaman can rely on his enhanced power attacks to deal extra damage and apply effects to his enemies. Or instead, he can unleash a powerful Spirit Swarm. This will drain both the magicka and stamina of its target, and once those are depleted, it'll leech their life force. In dire situations, a Master Shaman can summon the Shield of Awe, a massive AoE that'll weaken every enemy that dares to step within its bounds. And that's it for the five new archetypes. Which one you choose is entirely up to you. There's enough inside each one for a full focused playthrough, but you could always mix and match between them and play as a jack of all trades. If you're interested in giving it a go, you can find everything you need down below. As always, be sure to support mod authors in any way possible, and thanks for watching.